Hi, this is Carlos with CNC Aquariums. We're here today with Richard of Aficionado to discuss plumbing of your aquariums. We're using his tank as an example. Uh, today we're going to be going over PVC, tubing, how to put your system together using the proper tools, what tools you should have, uh, preparations you should do, and um, put it all together. And I hope you guys like it. First step is planning your aquarium. Um, not all of us have the luxury of knowing every piece of equipment that we want to, that we can have or want to have in the system right off the bat, but it's always good to have an idea of what you're looking for to have at the end when you're all said and done with your, your setup. So you can plan out. Um, we're planning out to have a couple reactors, an algae scrubber, pump, return to this tank, all these things that you want to take into consideration. Once that's done, you put together a sketch. It doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to be on a computer screen, but at least it gives you an idea of what parts you're going to need, what, how many T's you're going to need, so on and so forth. Um, I like to draw it out so it's all in front of me, just have an idea of how I'm going to do it together, put it together. Um, and then you start buying your parts. So the biggest thing is what parts do I need? What do I going to use? Figuring out what fittings, what sizes really are, are, are required by the pieces of equipment they're using, such as your pump, such as your reactors, uh, flow rates you have to take into consideration. But generally, every, most of the things are gonna be in your, either your one inch, your three quarter, or your half inch fittings. Um, the biggest things, number one, most overflow boxes require bulkheads. Bulkheads are for the mere purpose of sealing your tank off from your overflow box, but giving you the chance to connect it to your plumbing. All right, so for this here, this is gonna go, this is your flange, this is gonna go on your, either your glass or your acrylic, followed by the, the hex nut that's gonna close up the gap and perform a proper seal to your aquarium. The biggest thing with this, guys, is that some people talk about siliconing, gluing. You never wanna glue your bulkheads. Bulkheads are meant to just be pressure tight. Couple, once you get to the tight part, one, maybe one and a half extra turns, that's it. Over tightening can cause leaks. Under tightening can cause leaks. Big, big problem with a lot of people have. So that's number one tip. Secondly, your ball valves. Now, this is a little bit more of a ball valve than most people need because we decided to go with couplers on both sides. You have ball valves that have a, uh, sorry, unions on one side and a slip fitting on the other. You can do threaded fittings. You can do just a straight ball valve. All depends on the purpose of your setup and what you're gonna tie into your setup. So we wanted to have very accessible to all of our components. The accessibility of the components is big because when you gotta change out your GFO, or you change out your carbon or just need to clean something out, you have the accessibility of just closing the valve and opening your union. Now, your parts come apart, you're not leaking water everywhere. Nice little thing to have on your, your system. So another thing that you're gonna encounter a lot are things like bushings and barb, valve, uh, barb fittings. Barb fittings are what connect basically your PVC to your uh, vinyl tubing. Big thing with this, guys, don't get just the vinyl tubing that just slides right over it. You're not gonna get a good seal. Even if you put clamps, sometimes they'll leak. Um, you wanna have it slightly snug over the, the barb uh, fitting, and then what you do is you just heat up the, the vinyl tubing with some hot water, and then slide the tubing right on. It's gonna give you a good seal. You clamp just for extra uh, protection, and you're good to go. These come in a variety of sizes as well. Major, ma the uh, main sizes are gonna be your half inch, three quarter, one inch. Your bushings are one of many, many PVC parts you can use on your aquarium. Won't go into all of them because we'll be here all day, but you'll see the, the variety of ones that we're using on this build today. So after the PVC parts, you gotta think about the tools. Without the tools, you can't put a tank together properly. You're gonna need your PVC cutters. Very, very important. You can use a hacksaw, works very well, you get clean cuts, However, you're going to spend all night hacksawing 
the, uh, the PVC. This will get you a nice clean cut as well as an accurate cut. So, decent little investment. Um, I would highly suggest buying them if you're gonna be doing any work with PVC now or in the future. The biggest other thing is have a decent sized wrench. You're gonna need a wrench to make sure um, you get that, that bulkhead, just that quarter turn or half a turn extra tight just so you're, you're good. As well as um, some of the threaded fittings uh, that you wanna make sure on either pumps, um, barb fittings, stuff like that are all nicely sealed in together. After your tools, I would also consider them tools too, are gonna to be your PVC glue, your PVC cleaner, Teflon tape, these are very, very important things to be putting an aquarium together using PVC. Um, depending on the PVC that you're gonna be using, is gonna be the glue that you're gonna use. Uh, I generally like to just use a good cleaner and a regular PVC cement. However, if you um, work with spot flex tubing, uh, PVC I should say, we're not using that today, but with spot flex, you wanna make sure you use medium to heavy glue because of the flexibility uh, you need that extra, that extra weight and that extra bond that creates, uh, is created with that, that medium body uh, PVC glue. Um, other than that, I like to keep a drill on hand, uh, a little Dremel sort of uh, tool in case you need to uh, trim pipe a little bit differently. You have a little bit more accessibility that way, uh, or versatility I should say. Um, and a screwdriver, can never go wrong with a screwdriver. So these are the, the, the few tools that I always recommend to have on hand or access to them because you may eventually need them or definitely will need them. All right, so guys, next we're gonna talk about um, getting to execution. Um, before we can actually execute, what I like to do is I like to lay out the equipment where it's going to be, such as your skimmer, your, in this case, algae scrubber, uh, reactors, pumps, all that kind of stuff. So you can kind of start lining it up uh, properly and have an idea of how much pipe you're gonna need, where the measurements, what cuts you're gonna make, so on and so forth. Uh, once you got that started, then we can start actually executing it. What we've, what we've been planning for, putting all this work together and start putting this tank together. Um, personally, where I always like to start is at the overflow box. That is where your first contact of water into the tank and out of the tank. So I like to start there. So we, we plumb up the, uh, the bulkheads and the intakes as well as the return. And then we start going from there. Um, after that, we're gonna start plumbing underneath the aquarium uh, with our, our, our ball valves, our elbows, everything that we've laid out. And our goal at the end of the day is to get as close to that sketch or that drawing or that idea that we had in the beginning to come out in person, in real life, underneath your aquarium. Does it always come out exactly? No. Um, but we're gonna get there, we'll get as close as we can uh, each and every time. And as you guys do more tanks or plumbing and renovations or adding equipment, you'll get better and better every time you work with some PVC and, and some and vinyl tubing and stuff like that. Um, make it fun, don't, don't go nuts over it. Just take the proper steps in the execution and the planning like we've been talking about and you guys will have a, a great setup. Next we're going to start talking about uh, actually putting the, the PVC together, the most important part. Um, a big thing to keep in mind is you're now starting to bond plastics. Uh, two different materials that are coming together and the way to bond them is by using the PVC cement. Now, this cement does not work properly unless it's got a clean surface for both parts to adhere to. If you have a little bit of speck of dust, you could have a leak. Uh, it's very important to keep both sides clean. I like to clean each end that I'm about to glue right before I glue them. So that way I know that it hasn't been sitting in a, in, in a corner somewhere while I'm working on the tank, something got into it and we could have possibly gotten some dirt into it or whatever it may be. So biggest thing is to Use your PVC cleaner first. You wanna clean the inside of the fitting, whether it be an elbow, a T, whatever that you're going to start gluing, you gotta use the cleaner. The other side is gonna be your PVC pipe that's gonna go into it. Um, those two need to be cleaned well. Give it a second or two to dry, it doesn't take very long. Once it's dry and you're ready to glue, now you use your glue. During the gluing process, we'll show you how, to, how I do it. Uh, you wanna make sure you get glue, enough glue on both sides uh, of the, the pieces that are being put together. And kind of give them a couple turns. So make sure that glue gets in there real good. So that now all the pieces, parts of the, 
the PVC are starting to bond. Now the chemical bond will happen in a matter of a few seconds. It's not gonna take long. Some like to let it sit 48, 72 hours. Um, it's, per, uh, to me, personal preference. I like to give it about 24 hours if I can before we start putting water in it and, and you should be fine. All right, so guys, like we talked about, the first place I start always is the overflow box. Um, here we're gonna be talking about the return first. Um, obviously you gotta take off the nut, off the bulkhead. The gasket always goes on the top side of the tank, not where the nut goes. Um, if, because this is, you can't see it, but it'll actually be at a slight angle. So if you put this uh, rubber gasket on the bottom side, you'll never have a proper seal. Um, mistake I see a lot too when I'm redoing tanks. Um, flange always on the top side of the bulkhead. I can't stress that enough. Uh, right now we're just using uh, white PVC to mock it and bring it down to the, to the hole because obviously it's a taller tank and we, not all of our arms get down there. So go ahead and do that. So now, once we get that standpipe in place, we make sure the gasket is, uh, is there and set. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and put the nut on the bottom end of the bulkhead. Uh, one thing I also wanna stress, if you're redoing any form of your plumbing and you're, you're dealing and working with your bulkheads, when you're putting, I like to use new bulkheads when I redo things. If you can reuse it, if everything is okay, go ahead and reuse it. The biggest thing you gotta make sure is that bottom, that glass, that acrylic, whatever it may be, is nice and clean so you don't have any debris that may be impeding that gasket from having a proper seal. Another thing that I, you know, a little tip that I, I try to give out to everybody I can. Yeah. How pretty you wanna do it. All right guys, so now that we have the return seated and ready to be plumbed, I like to do the, uh, the drains next uh, just because that way we can see what clearance we have what the space we have for the PVC and so forth now for these purposes we're we have a pre-made um, standpipe we're not going to get into standpipes because that's a big discussion and there's a lot of different thoughts on how to make standpipes and overflows and drains and stuff like that so this is just going to be mocked up for right now because we may very well be changing this to red for matching everything else down below uh, but same thing again guys Gasket on the top portion of the bulkhead. Uh, make sure it's nice and clean. There's nothing uh, impeding the possible sealant. Other thing I like to do sometimes, uh, which we already did, um, some of these bulkheads come with some little shards of plastic sometimes that they didn't you know, carve them out or during the, the, the manufacturing process. So you, sometimes you wanna just go ahead and run the nut portion up and down the bulkhead just so you can get that stuff off. So that when you're down below, and you're trying to plummet and you're in a little bit of an awkward situation that it's a difficult angle for you to get to and now this is going on a little bit smoother. So another little tip for you guys. Okay, we'll come down. So you guys, sometimes this is exactly what uh, I was talking about with terms of bulkheads and a little bit of imperfections that could impede the, the nut going on there. So just keep in mind and, and uh, you know, check the bulkheads out and then run that, that nut portion up and down the, the bulkhead just to make your life a little easier when you're completing the, the, the process. Now, the biggest thing that I can tell you is I do not like to glue your drains. Um, for whatever reason it may be, you need to access a fish in the overflow box or whatever it may be. You want to drain it and clean it, you have the ability to pop it off. I don't like to glue them. Some people do. It's just uh, a no-no in my, in my eyes. Uh, but you always have to glue that return because it's under pressure. The water's being pushed up and out. That's where you can have some problems too and you have a waterfall in your tank. All right, guys. Uh, next part is uh, starting to cut the pipe, PVC. Um, the cutters that we have today are a little bit smaller than the inch and a half pipe that we have for our drains. So I'm gonna have to go outside and use a power tool, uh, my little Dremel, to make a nice cut here for, for this size PVC. Um, big box stores, they do sell bigger cutters, but because we're not using that much of it today, we didn't need it. Um, biggest thing is not something I came up with, but they always say measure twice, cut once. 
Um, I like to measure three times and cut once. Um, measure, measure, measure. Make sure the measurements are good. Um, a few things that you should always take into account when you're measuring for PVC. Um, the biggest thing is the space in the bulkhead before the end of the, the fitting. Uh, very similar to your, your unions or your elbows, they all have uh, basically a stopper uh, where the piece of PVC stops. That needs to be accounted for. So what I like to do is just grab your measuring tape, put it into the fitting, okay? For example, this here is an inch and a quarter that uh, is needed just to go into the fitting. Um, once you have that, now you have the distance between the, this edge of this fitting and the next fitting that you're gonna be cutting or splicing into or connecting into or gluing into, however you wanna say it. Um, so that's the biggest things that you have to take into account when you're measuring. If not, you don't take that into account, you're gonna come up short or you might come up long and then you're gonna have things that are not even and, and coming out all weird. So make sure you do that. Uh, with this type of PVC, uh, right now I need my first cuts, I need two of them because we have two drains, I need six inches of PVC pipe. So what I'm gonna do, is very simply, is just grab your tape measure, I just use a Sharpie, and make your mark. Some people grab a piece of paper, wrap it around, make a circle around, if you can do that. Um, when you're using the smaller cutters, you don't need to because it's gonna cut it for you. Um, in this case, we should be okay. Um, so that's it. So we're gonna go ahead and cut this pipe, uh, make a few more cuts and start putting things together. All right guys, we're back and we just uh, got a lot of the, the uh, overflow plumbing set up and set, stride, glued, the whole nine yards. Uh, you can see we have two drains and one return that's coming into the tank. Right now we've, we've plumbed the drains completely and into the, the sump into the, the first chamber where it's going to now be overflowing into your filter sock area and your skimmer and down the whole line. Um, next is now plumbing the, the Vectra pump, the return. Um, what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be cutting a couple, few pieces of PVC and uh, the next part, uh, part uh, the plumbing supplies that we're going to use is this one inch ball valve true union on both ends. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna have it right about here so we have some more control. Um, God forbid if we need to take down the system being that it's all modular, we could do it from here. We can cut off the water supply straight from the tank. There's a million different things that can happen that uh, this could be uh, helpful for. Now, obviously you can see these big monster ones, these are the inch and a half that we did as well. So that in case we have to take out the sump for whatever reason, it, for a hundred different reasons again, um, there's accessibility. You can just turn the valves here on either one and then just disconnect the, the union side that you need to disconnect. Um, obviously one I will leave it open because we want as much flow as we can. Now you can see we took the standpipes all the way down to just about three inches below the bottom. Uh, you'd say, why are you doing that? Well, we don't wanna put it too close down to the bottom for the fact that you're gonna reduce flow out of that inch and a half pipe. You wanna make sure that the, the water can get out of there sufficiently. Um, too high, you're gonna have a lot of water breaking and depending on the water level, you may actually even have some splashing. So we wanted to keep it a little bit lower so that some of those bubbles and that, that turbulent part can kinda of get dissipated as low as possible, but not too low. Um, but like I said, what we're going to do now is we're going to cut some pieces and measure some pieces and uh, show you how we glue the PVC together and uh, we'll go from there.
right guys, so a quick recap of what we just, uh, next part that we just did. Uh, we connected our ball valve that's gonna control the main uh, flow to the tank, whether we wanna have it on, cut it down, whatever it may be, or during any type of service if we need to just move some pipe for us. Uh, it's leading to a T that's, that's being fed by the Vectra uh, along with a additional union. We know that the union is already built into the Vectra, um, but just because we're doing rigid piping, sometimes that can be a little tight. So we put in an extra union so that if uh, Richard has to take apart the pump, just to do some maintenance on it, whatever it may be, he can easily access it by having a little bit more leeway between the pump and the pipes. Um, we're gonna be putting some straps up. Not probably necessary with this type of build, but we're gonna do it anyways, just because you wanna keep everything supported. We don't wanna put any stress in the pipes. Uh, even though they're more rigid and more durable, they still can be stressed out um, and crack during time, just like any other plastic. Um, next, what we're gonna be doing is uh, basically the manifold. Um, this is technically, I guess, kind of part of the manifold, this T here, because it feeds into the manifold, but basically you have the, pump, the return pump that's gonna be in your sump, sucking up the water out of the sump, and pushing it back to the tank. We're gonna divert part of it over to the manifold. Manifold is just a nice fancy name for an area that has some T's, some elbows, and some ball valves. Uh, it's basically the feeds for additional equipment without using multiple pumps. A lot of us have reactors with a little maxi jet or a Rio or whatever it may be to feed that, that reactor. What we're doing is eliminating all that power consumption, heat, and all that by just using one pump because the, the Vectra is large enough to carry all of them. So what we're gonna do from here is tee off from here. Um, as you can see from prior uh, images and the, the schematics and stuff, what we have set up is multiple different tees that we're going to grow, uh, put in a line in a linear fashion, um, along with some ball valves below them. Those ball valves are then gonna feed into a barred fitting where we're going to be using vinyl tubing, you know, like everybody uses, uh, the flexible tubing. Uh, that's just gonna give us a little bit more uh, flexibility and accessibility to the reactors, to the algae scrubber, and so forth. So during maintenance, every month or so, there's a lot of ease into accessing those items. All right, guys, so we just finished the manifold. This is what one looks like. Um, Obviously, it can be smaller, larger, depending on what size pipe you're using. Um, it could be just about any design. This is a little bit more beefier industrial look because we did the, the dual um, unions on the ball valves, the true unions. So uh, we have a lot more versatility of, of separating things and, and not. Um, we just got to glue this now into here and mount it, uh, make sure it's strapped in. Um, but I wanted to talk to you about one other thing that's very important in, in, in plumbing your aquarium. Um, it's these guys. These are threaded fittings, okay? We use these on a lot of different reasons. Um, one being to thread in your barb fittings. Uh, two, sometimes you have pumps that have male or female fittings. Anytime this is being shot with, uh, with pressure and water's going through the, these items, you wanna make sure you use Teflon tape. Teflon tape is a sealant without gluing and allows you to continue to keep the water inside the pipes not leaking everywhere around your, your aquarium. Um, the biggest trick I can give you in Teflon tape is you grab your fitting with the threaded to your right, okay? Uh, you grab the beginning of your Teflon and you go away from you and you do it about 10 times, you count 10, 10 rounds. After this eighth to 10th round, generally you have enough Teflon tape here that you are going to have no leaks. It might be tight to get it on there. Use a wrench, just get it to make sure that you got a tight, tight fit because now with this, you're not gonna have any leaks. And that's what we want. We wanna make sure you don't have any leaks on the, the aquarium when it's done. So uh, stay tuned, we're gonna finish up this here, uh, glue it, get these fittings on, and then put the, the rest of the equipment in, in its place and, and almost uh, wrap this thing up.
once again, this is Carlos with CNC Aquariums. Uh, here with Rich of Aficionado Channel, and uh, we plumbed up his tank today, got all the PVC together. I hope you enjoyed uh, some of the tidbits and the facts and tricks that we provided to, to getting your system together. Remember, it all comes starts with planning, getting a parts list, equipments list, a plan, execution, and how you're going to put it all together and get a finished product like we got today. Uh, from beginning from the overflow down to the, the sump, your pumps, equipment, reactors, manifolds, whatever it may be that suits your needs, there's always a way to do it. And I hope we uh, could help you along with the process. Once again, Carlos with C CNC Aquariums. Hope you enjoyed the video.